um, ritualize or distract themselves from internalizing their spirituality. And so, you know, the idea of wearing a gold ring versus drinking gold and silver colloid that's invisible in your body, I think, you know, one is obviously materialistic and visible, and the other is invisible and spiritual. So I think that, you know, when I think about crystals, I think most people are missing and that might be toys to be set aside until people understand, you know, spiritual energies moving moving through our bodies uh, more clearly. You know, those of us wearing jewelry mostly wear uh, metal jewelry, and, you know, certainly there are traditions, ancient traditions, in fact, that, you know, for example, if you have a gem on your necklace, you want to have an open back so that the energies can, um, you know, move through the crystal or, you know, are not blocked by a metal backing. Um, you know, all these ancient ideas are valid, but I'm not sure if anyone was wearing metal necklaces in ancient pyramids. Um, they might have been burnt, just as you would be burnt if you wore a, a gold necklace next to a, a wireless tower, you know. There are reports, and in fact, in my book, I quote a woman who was burned at all of the points where she was wearing jewelry when she was working at um, a wireless um, tower. So, you know, that account and the accounts of many other people really corroborate what ancient, um, you know, like the Bible, ancient books tell us that you will be burned if you go into these places. So um, it's... Uh, you know, seeing the correlations has really blown my mind and drawn me to, to unusual conclusions that I think people should consider. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Gemini. Um, for our last question, we'll go to Green Meadow. Hi, Alex. What are the differences you have noticed among the younger awake population and the older awake population? In my mind, the older generation took longer to believe their own perceptions and it took more to see beyond the accepted reality. The younger generation that I know seem to see other dimensions more easily. They also seem to be waiting to take action. It seems like they're waiting for an effective timing or a new course of action. How do you see the younger generation taking action? And how are they handling having 2012 come in the middle of their adulthood instead of towards the end of their adulthood? That's been something that I've been watching with uh, with interest and it's a curious thing because I think um, you know when I look at my own situation and I think about you know my um, my birth time in relation to the 2012 event and to see you know what's coming <clears throat> I I definitely perceive in my own self a level of cognitive dissonance where if I had tried to come to the plate with these ideas 10 years ago or 15 years ago and just um, six or eight years ago, that even, you know, that discrepancy of a few years would have put me into a totally different place in terms of the response the world is giving me. So definitely everyone is on their own pace of learning, and I think that a major factor in most people's decision to reincarnate is the kind of lesson that they will experience during this transition time. So, you know, often um, people quote Edgar Casey or you know, address his worldview that the Atlantean souls were reincarnating at this time. I definitely see that myself and see that there is a kind of um, recognition by younger people that they are doing what they can and they will do much more. Um, and it's almost a patience, you know. It's a, I think everyone, you know, certainly the older generation that laid the foundation for many of the changes that we are experiencing Many of them have passed and may be coming in, you know, anew, right, with these changes or maybe waiting, you know, for their next lesson plan to unfold. But certainly, you know, the life lessons that can be learned, you know, 10 years ago versus what will be learned in 10 years from now are so drastically different that that, for me, uh, help, helps explain you know, what we see happening in consciousness or we see cognitive dissonance really calling out whole portions of the population and we see, um, you know, younger people coming in with a with a new hope and a disregard for the um, mazes that, that people exposed to modern media find themselves in. So, you know, I, I've had some amazing conversations with very young people who are very much in tune with what I'm saying and 
finding the physics references in the papers that I include in my books is irrelevant for them because they intuitively understand it. Um, so it's very interesting for me to, to meet people on so many different levels and to be able to speak with PhD physicists and um, get the opinions of professors and teachers and children. And I haven't had all that much feedback from, you know, diverse parts of society on what I'm doing. But, uh, you know, the the connections that I'm making with people certainly show me that, you know, there's there are so many other young people out there with ideas that are um, waiting for opportunities to flourish. And I'm, you know, in, in blazing the trail that I'm blazing, I'm hoping to encourage young people to, you know, do exactly what they feel in their heart needs to be done. And, you know, to disregard completely the financial capitalistic systems that, that may limit or may have limited people, you know, during the beat era. Um, so it's a fantastic time, certainly. That's so awesome. Yeah, I'm, I really, it's wonderful what you're doing, and you're just a rich source of knowledge. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been uh, it's been a long journey, but I'm really glad to have taken my time with it and, and gone slowly to be able to do it the right way because um, I don't want to lose people. I want to bring people up to a level of understanding that allows them to experience the freedom that we're being offered now and that, that ancient knowledge, you know, really clues us into. Um, so thank you for, you know, allowing me this opportunity here with all your questions to be able to bring that to the fore. We've just spoken with Alex Putney from www.humanresonance.org. Thank you for your time tonight, Alex. Though there will be oh, a need for much, though there will be a need for much sacrifice in the coming days, months, and years ahead, everyone should remember this: Why be afraid of sacrifice when the soul is forever eternal? To the to end the show, I wanted to quote a paragraph from Alex's book, Light Water. What is the blood that connects stones with soul, men with sons? It is the universal unity, the one creative principle crystallizing into myriad forms. And when liberated by sacrifice, it returns to unity, because to sacrifice is to act consciously. To sacrifice that which will be taken away is to deny the destiny that takes it. On behalf of Fox and all the members of the Webbot Forum, thank you, Alex. In our tradition of pie loving and pie making, may you and your family have many pies to come. <laughs> thank you so much. Look forward to our next conversation. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Awesome. Thank you, God. Good night, Alex. Really that was great. Thank you. I'll have to re-listen to this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I use a lot of words that are not too common, but get your dictionaries handy. Looking forward to your e-books, too. Thank you. All right, you bet. <laughs>